Today's topic is uh, reheating in Rankine cycle. So first of all, what is the reheating? I already explained about the Rankine cycle and now one of the modification is reheating in the Rankine cycle. So first we try to understand what is the reheating in the Rankine cycle. In this diagram, you can see clearly there is a two diagram, one is the line diagram and second one is the TS diagram for the same. Okay. So this is the boiler and 2 to 3, 2 to 3 is the heat addition process in the boiler. You can see from the TS diagram, this is the constant pressure heat addition process. 2 to 3 is the constant pressure heat addition process in the boiler. Then what happened? 3 to 4 is the expansion in the turbine which is a higher pressure turbine. Okay. 3 to 4 you can see from the TS diagram also 3 to 4 is the expansion from the high pressure turbine. So difference in the simple basic Rankine cycle and reheating Rankine cycle is that in the, in the reheating Rankine cycle after expansion in the high pressure turbine the steam is sent back to the boiler again and again it is heated. The reheating is done 4 to 5. You can see clearly 2 to 3 is the heat addition in the boiler, then expansion 3 to 4, expansion 3 to 4 and then again reheated in the boiler 4 to 5, 4 to 5 which is at constant pressure. So, so 4 to 5 and 2 to 3 is the constant pressure heating. Okay. 4 to 5 is reheating and then again it is expanded in the low pressure turbine 5 to 6 and then as in usual case 6 to 1 6 this is 6 to 1 is the condensation process in the condenser and 1 to 2 is the pump 1 to 2 is pump and this cycle goes continue. So, in the reheating, basically what we done, we done after partial expansion, we send back again, steam is sent back again to the boiler. I hope this is very clear. Now, the question is arise, why reheating is done in the Rankine cycle. What is the need of reheating in the Rankine cycle? So explain this. To explain this, let us start in this way. To increase the efficiency of the Rankine cycle as we study in the previous classes, we have to increase the pressure of we have to increase the pressure of heat addition. Why? If you increase, let's say this is the this is the heat addition is at 3 mega Pascal and this is the heat addition is at 15 mega Pascal. Okay. When you increase the pressure of heat addition, automatically heat addition temperature increase. So if the heat addition temperature increase, efficiency increase. T mean heat addition if increase, efficiency increase. But by increasing the pressure, one thing you should notice, this is the lower pressure heat addition and this is the higher pressure heat addition. Temperature is same, 
in both case 600 degrees Celsius, 600 degrees Celsius. One thing you should notice after expansion this four point is here and in the 15 mega Pascal pressure heat addition this four point means exit of the turbine point is slightly shifted toward the liquid condition. What I mean to say that if the pressure is lower and you expand then after expansion the moisture content is lower than if the pressure is high. I will explain in, uh, again the heat addition pressure should be high to increase the to increase the efficiency but if you increase the pressure the moisture moisture content are going to be increased suppose if i decrease the pressure and then expand in the same way let's suppose this is the 3 mega pascal pressure and I am going to the same temperature and then expand. Let us say this is a 2 mega Pascal pressure. So, what happened here? Here the moisture content is less, here the moisture content is high. So, if the heat addition at higher pressure after expansion you get a moisture content, high moisture content. I think it is clear. If the heat addition at the higher pressure, if the heat addition is higher pressure, you get a more moisture content after the expansion. So, one is the advantage, one is disadvantage of the heat addition at higher pressure. First one is the advantage is efficiency increase, no doubt, but if pressure of heat addition increase. But disadvantage is moisture content, moisture content also increase if pressure increase, moisture content increase if pressure of heat addition increase. Moisture content at where? At the exit of, at the exit of turbine. And if the moisture content is increased, the disadvantage is well known that it erodes the turbine blades. Okay, turbine's blades eroded, gets eroded. So we expect at the exit of the turbine there should be a saturated or slightly superheated steam. This is the major problem which is face in the if you increase the pressure. So, remove to remove this problem we have two options. First option is we can increase this temperature further and further. Suppose this is 600 degrees Celsius. Suppose this is a 600 degrees Celsius and we increase this temperature 700, 1000 and then expand means first option is superheating. First option is superheating. Decrease the moisture content of the uh, at higher pressure there are two options. First is the superheating, but superheating has a limited scope due to metallurgical conditions of the turbines. Turbine blades are made of the certain material which can sustain a certain fixed maximum temperature. Okay. Then what is the second option? Second option to decrease the moisture content at the exit of the turbine is 
reheating read so the objective basic objective of the reheating is to to decrease the moisture content the basic advantage of reheating is to decrease the moisture content decrease the moisture content so what we conclude from this lecture the thing is if you want to increase the efficiency you have to have add the heat at higher pressure but the disadvantage of heat addition at higher pressure and temperature is that after expansion there is a moisture content to reduce the moisture con content you have two options first one is the superheating and second one is the reheating superheating has a limited scope due to the metallurgical conditions and the second option reheating is the only alternative which can reduce the moisture content so the basic objective of reheating is to reduce the moisture content it will also it will also increase the efficiency it will also increase the efficiency reheating reheating reduce moisture content and it will increase efficiency okay it will increase efficiency why why it is increase efficiency efficiency is increase due to the increase of the mean temperature of heat addition you can see clearly here heat is added not only at the point 2 to 3 but 4 to 5 hence mean temperature of heat addition increase and hence efficiency is increase if anybody ask at what extent you can increase the efficiency in the Rankine cycle by reheating practically it is observed efficiency is increased 4 to 5 percent by the reheating okay thank you this is a basic reheating in the Rankine cycle one thing is very clear one thing is very clear if anybody asks what is the heat addition in the Rankine cycle the heat addition is at two places h3 minus h2 h3 minus h2 h3 this is 0.2 to 3 is the heat addition plus plus h5 minus h4 this is the total heat addition what is the work work at two places at at uh, one at high pressure ter uh, high pressure turbine and second at the low pressure turbine this is h3 minus h4 turbine work this is a work done in high pressure turbine expansion in the high pressure turbine and second is h5 minus h6 this is the expansion in the low pressure turbine if anybody ask what is the pump work pump work is h2 minus h1 h2 minus h1 that can be represented as v v means specific volume dp okay if anybody asked nest network the network is turbine minus pump if anybody asked efficiency efficiency is w net upon heat supply okay thank you very much i hope this lecture you can better understand by this lecture what is the procedure of reheating in the rankine cycle thank you thank you very much